I always thought haunted houses were just a cliché, something to spice up a boring Halloween night. But that was before I inherited the old Whitaker Mansion at the edge of town. The locals whispered about it, crossing themselves whenever they passed its crumbling gates. I should have listened. The first night, the air was thick with the scent of mildew and secrets. I heard the soft patter of footsteps above, though I was certain I was alone. I told myself it was just the house settling, but then came the whispers, so faint I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. Leave, they said over and over, until it was a scream inside my skull. I tried to leave, I swear I did, but the doors wouldn't budge, the windows wouldn't break. I was trapped, the shadows grew longer, and in them I saw shapes, twisted human-like figures that darted just out of sight when I tried to focus on them. The night grew colder, and I could see my breath, even as I felt the sweat bead on my forehead. It was then that I saw her, the lady of the house, they called her, a ghostly figure in white, her eyes hollow pits of despair. She didn't speak, but her message was clear. I was in her domain now, every night since. She comes to me, and the house. It groans with the weight of her sorrow. I write this as a warning. If you're reading this, it means I didn't make it out. The house is alive, and it's hungry. Don't make the same mistake I did. Don't come looking for me. Just let the Whitaker Mansion be, and pray it never calls your name. The nights grew longer, and the darkness in the Whitaker Mansion seemed to seep into my very soul. I could no longer tell where the whispers ended and my thoughts began. The Lady in White was no longer alone. She was joined by others, each bearing the marks of their untimely demise. A gentleman with a noose around his neck, a maid with her eyes gouged out, a child silent and staring, with a crimson stain spreading across his chest. They never touched me, but their presence was a constant pressure, a reminder that I was an intruder in a house of grief and rage. I tried to communicate, to ask what they wanted, but they only stared, their eyes empty of everything but accusation. One night, I found a diary, its pages yellowed with age, hidden beneath a loose floorboard. It belonged to the original mistress of the house, and it told a tale of betrayal and murder. The Whitaker family had been poisoned, one by one, by a jealous relative who coveted the mansion and its lands. The diary ended abruptly, but the story was clear. I was living in a tomb. I knew then that I had to leave, to escape the madness that was clawing its way into my mind. I gathered my courage and confronted the spirits, declaring that I would reveal the truth, that I would bring them justice. For the first time, the Lady in White spoke, her voice a whisper of silk and sorrow. Find the truth, set us free. With newfound determination, I scoured the mansion for clues, delving into the dark history of the Whitaker family. And then, on a stormy night, when the lightning seemed to strike at the very heart of the house, I found it, the proof of the treachery that had led to the family's downfall. I won't detail how I escaped, that's a tale for another time. But I did escape, and I brought the truth to light. The mansion stands empty now, a monument to a tragedy long past. But sometimes when the wind howls just right, you can hear the whispers of the Whitaker family, finally at peace. The tale of the Whitaker mansion spread far and wide, becoming a legend whispered in hushed tones. They say the spirits of the house roam free now, no longer bound by the chains of their dark past. But the mansion, with its gabled roofs and ivy-clad walls, still holds secrets. Secrets that beckon the curious and the brave. Years have passed since my harrowing escape, and yet the pull of the mansion is irresistible. I find myself drawn back to that forsaken place, as if the house itself calls to me in dreams. I return, not as a victim, but as a seeker of truths yet uncovered. As I step across the threshold, the familiar scent of decay greets me like an old friend. The silence is profound, yet it feels like a prelude to a symphony of horrors yet to play. I wander through the desolate halls, my footsteps echoing, a solitary beat against the quietude. In the grand ballroom, where once laughter and music reigned, there is a piano, 
its keys dusty and worn. I press a key, and a single note pierces the silence, a sound so full of longing that it seems to awaken the house. The air stirs, and a chill runs down my spine as I realize I am not alone. Figures emerge from the shadows, not with malice, but with a solemn grace. They are the remnants of the Whitaker family, their spectral forms shimmering in the dim light. They do not speak, but their eyes tell a story of redemption and release. I understand now that the mansion is not just a house, it is a keeper of stories, a guardian of the past, and I, the last narrator of its tale, have become a part of its legacy. The Whitaker Mansion may be haunted, but it is also hallowed, a place where the veil between worlds is thin and the echoes of history resonate with the living. So I write this final chapter not to frighten but to honor those who came before. The mansion stands as a monument to their lives, their tragedies, and their triumphs. And as the sun sets, casting long shadows across the grounds, I leave the Whitaker Mansion behind, its mysteries intact, its spirits at peace, and its stories etched forever in the annals of the supernatural. As I stepped into the Ravenwood Manor, the door creaked shut behind me, sealing my fate. The manor, shrouded in darkness, seemed to breathe with a life of its own. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat echoing through the hollow halls. I had come seeking stories, but now I was the story, a tale of a writer who dared to dance with the shadows. The air was heavy with whispers, each one a warning, a plea, a curse. I could feel eyes upon me, watching from every dark corner, every cracked mirror. The grand staircase loomed before me, its banisters twisted like the gnarled branches of the forest outside. I ascended, each step creaking underfoot, a symphony of dread that crescendoed with my rising fear. At the top, a long corridor stretched into oblivion, its walls lined with portraits whose eyes seemed to follow my every move. A sudden chill enveloped me, and I turned to see a figure at the far end of the hall, a woman, her visage blurred as if seen through a veil of tears. She beckoned to me, and against my better judgment, I followed. Her room was a time capsule of sorrow, the air thick with the scent of roses long dead. She spoke without words, her story a ched in the very walls of the manor. Betrayal, loss, a love that turned to madness. I felt her pain as if it were my own, a wheat that threatened to crush me, and then she vanished, leaving me alone with the ghosts of her past. The manor was alive with the echoes of its history, and I realized I was but a player in its grand design. Each room held a piece of the puzzle, a fragment of the tragedy that had befallen the Ravenwood family. And as the night wore on, I understood that I was not just writing the story, I was part of it, a character in a play written by the dead. I write this now a warning to those who come after me. Ravenwood Manor is not just a house. It is a keeper of secrets, a prison for the souls who cannot find rest. Beware its call, for once you enter, you may never leave. You become part of the story, a whisper in the dark, a shadow in the night. Hi guys, thank you so the tale of Ravenwood Manor grew darker with each passing night. The whispers turned to wails, the shadows to specters, and the chill in the air to a frost that seemed to freeze time itself. I was no longer just an observer. I had become a part of the manor's very essence. The woman in the veil of tears, the mistress of the house, had a name, Eleanor. She revealed her story to me, not in words, but in visions that played before my eyes like scenes from a tragic play. Her husband, consumed by greed, had made a pact with dark forces sacrificing his family for eternal wealth. But the price was steep, and the manor became a cage for their tormented souls. Eleanor's spirit guided me through the labyrinthine corridors, each room a chapter of the manor's cursed history. The library, with its tomes bound in shadows, whispered of forbidden knowledge. The dining hall, set for a feast that never began, groaned with the hunger of unfulfilled desires. The nursery, its toys scattered and broken, echoed with the laughter of children that would never age. 
As dawn approached, the spirits grew restless, their forms flickering like candle flames in a tempest. Eleanor's hand touched mine, cold as the grave, and I felt a surge of power, a transfer of will. Free us, she implored, her voice a melody of sorrow and hope. I knew what I had to do. With the first light of day piercing the darkness, I found the heart of the manor, the room where the pact had been sealed. There, I confronted the darkness, a swirling abyss that hungered for more souls. With Eleanor's strength flowing through me, I broke the pact, shattering the chains that bound the spirits to Ravenwood. The manor shook to its foundations, a roar of release that echoed through the forest. As the sun rose, the spirits of Ravenwood Manor ascended, their forms aglow with ethereal light. Eleanor's eyes met mine one last time, gratitude and peace replacing the torment. I left Ravenwood Manor behind, its curse lifted, its halls silent. But the story of the manor lives on, a reminder that some houses are more than just brick and mortar. They are keepers of secrets, holders of history, and sometimes redeemers of souls.